tonight on the South Today. New research sheds light on the mystery illness that killed endangered kakapo in 2019. Cromwell citizens are joining forces to fight the spread of wilding pine trees in their neck of the woods. And Otago Polytech fashion students get a chance to see their graduation collections come to life on the catwalk. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. It's a case that has baffled scientists for the last few years, but new research has now confirmed the cause of a 2019 disease outbreak that killed seven endangered kākāpō. A mystery outbreak of a respiratory disease on Whenua Ho Codfish Island Reserve in 2019 infected 21 of the highly endangered birds, eventually killing seven of them. Aspergillosis, a disease caused by black mould, was the primary suspect at the time, with the sick birds treated accordingly. However, that disease usually only surfaces at times of a weakened immune system, making a population-wide outbreak highly unusual. New research from Genomics Aotearoa has finally revealed that a single strain of the mould was responsible, making it likely accidental introduction of a new strain sparked the outbreak. Doc says the new studies already led to new conservation practices, which it hopes will better protect birds in the future. A Southland beach has had a surprise visit from a regal bird. This king penguin was captured by Dunedin researcher Giveney Forbes waddling along Fortro Spit near Invercargill. The Department of Conservation says it's a rare sight to see the birds on land here. Experts say the penguin looks healthy and believe it's part of a large colony from the Macquarie Island Nature Reserve, which is administered by the Tasmanian government. Doc is advising people to keep their distance, with the king penguin expected to hit the waves and return back out to sea. An agreement between two groups to selectively fell trees at the southern entrance to Cromwell could be a template for other sites. Wilding pines have long been a source of contention in central Otago and one residence group has had enough. A green vista that's unwanted. The owners of five dwellings nestled below the gold miners monument near the southern entrance to Cromwell aren't keen to see some of these wilding pines removed. But spokesperson and Brewery Creek resident Sarah Cottle understands getting rid of the trees is a necessary evil. So it has been a, a, a steep learning curve. It is bittersweet that we are having to get rid of them because they are very they're attractive um, and they are used as, in a lot of marketing for the, the area. Um, so I'm sure that this, there will be a lot of people who are going to be left going, what? The Central Otago District Council approved its tree policy last week, which included the addition of plans to control wilding conifers. Some residents in neighbouring Bridge Hill are opposed to the logging of pines in the reserve and say chopping down the trees will take away the habitat of nesting birds. The council paused its eradication programme at Half Mile last year due to strong opposition from some members of the public. We now know that those trees, um, as much as they aesthetically look look good, um, are, are, are noxious weed. Almost a thousand trees are set to be removed from the site shortly, including several hundred large pines. In central Otago, the south today. An 18-year-old man has been charged with allegedly stabbing a dog, dog walker rather multiple times in Christchurch earlier this week. The teenager appeared in the Christchurch District Court this morning via video link. On Wednesday, police officers swooped on two homes in Aranui in connection to the assault. The properties are close to Bexley Reserve, where the man was found critically injured on Monday morning by his family. The 18-year-old male, Bailey Mesevi, is charged with wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. A 23-year-old woman has been charged with being an accessory and will appear at a later date. The injured man remains in a critical condition at Christchurch Hospital. Police have issued a strong warning to southern motorists after a spate of fatal traffic collisions involving trucks and cars on local roads. 
This fatal smash on Dunedin's northern motorway on Wednesday was just the latest in a string of serious, serious incidents. Now, the top traffic cop for the southern region is warning that safety messages are being ignored and says drivers should expect more enforcement on the open roads. Alcohol continues to be a problem, but police expect, suspect mobile phone use is also widespread. Driver distraction is suspected to be behind recent head-on collisions. Police say officers will be taking every opportunity to distract distracted drivers caught checking their phones at the wheel. Otago Polytechnic fashion students have their models hitting the runway this week with their own twist. Third year students are preparing to show off their collections at the annual student showcase via a video show rather than a live catwalk. Young models strutting their stuff, showing off the latest collections from up and coming Dunedin designers. This year's catwalk for third year fashion students at Otago Polytech has been filmed as a video showcase. It's a format that was used last year due to COVID-19 restrictions, but lecturers decided to keep it as it gave graduates multiple platforms to present their work. So we now have this wonderful online platform that um, is complementary to the live show, which at the live show they can have all their family and friends and it's a real celebration of their end of course. Students also appreciated the online video show, giving more people the chance to view their collections. The 2022 catwalk show featuring a wide variety of garments was filmed upstairs at Vault 21, providing a good neutral space to present their work. I think it's fantastic. It gives us another um, avenue for our we portfolios and it's fantastic that we can use a space here at Vault 21. It's got gorgeous natural lighting and it's such a good backdrop. Those videos will play on Friday night as part of the Collections 22 student showcase at the Otago Polytech Hub. In Dunedin, the South today. FIA Arcane, still to come on the South today. A Dunedin high school student goes head first onto the world stage in Canada for their chosen water sport. And our town locals are given creative license in an art exhibition fundraiser with a twist. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Hi, we're a concern Otago. Eight Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activity, including little box. Black Friday sale. No gimmicks, no clever marketing. Black Friday's coming up and that means it's sale time. And you know who loves a sale? My mate John. 30% off everything. John's got the biggest range of furniture and beds in store. Pay it off over 18 months interest free. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse and online at mymatejohn.co.nz. TC's and credit criteria apply. Where'd you get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins. We've got every sort of shirt. Warm ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it. The list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill.
Nakwe, welcome back. A Dunedin High School student is preparing to compete at the Junior World Diving Championships in Canada later this month. Theo Smith's had to come back from injury and is now aiming to make a splash on the world stage with a new outlook and some new tricks. Young Dunedin diver Theo Smith taking the plunge at Moana Pool. The year 13 student is on a mission. He's already one of the top junior divers in New Zealand. Now he's preparing to take on the best international athletes at the Junior World Diving Championship in Montreal, Canada. Smith's only recently started competing again after injuries put his diving career into a spin. During lockdown, I, um, I broke my hand. I had a bike crash, um, uh, broke, a, broke my skateboard. Um, so yeah, that took wee toll. Limited access to the high dive platform he trains on also prompted a change in strategy with a switch to the one and three meter springboard events. So I train about six days a week. Um, I also do some gym trainings, um, trampoline trainings as well, um, and then just lots of training in the pool as well. Smith also tried his hand at coaching younger divers, but said he's now rediscovered his passion for competing. I've, yeah, I've got a few, a few new tricks that I've um, been working on, so yeah, that'll be good. Smith will be the first male diver from Dunedin to make the international competition in more than 20 years and he's excited about representing New Zealand on the world stage. In Dunedin, the South Today. A popular fundraising art exhibition in Arrowtown is getting a makeover. The refurbished Lakes District Museum has invited locals to create original artworks for a new fundraising exhibition and they're being encouraged to bend the rules. Making the most of creative limitations, gallery staff hanging submissions from local Wakatipu artists and some local personalities for the new exhibition 30 by 30 Revisited. The fundraising event returns this weekend in association with the Arrowtown Creative Arts Society. It features the work of around 90 creators from renowned Wellington artist Ruby Jones through to celebrities like Chef Nadia Lim and Sir Michael Hill. Locals can buy their favourite pieces, but those hoping to take home a mural may be disappointed. The crucial point of difference here is that all artworks have to be 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres. 30 by 30 sounds restrictive and artists usually don't like being restricted, but they've actually, a couple of them have told me it forces them to be creative within that 30 by 30. So we have sculptures, we have pieces that are round. All funds raised from the show will go towards putting the final touches on the Lakes District Museum's multi-million dollar overhaul. It's going directly towards the museum displays. So the earthquake strengthening and restoration of the building is complete. And now we're busy putting the museum back in to those two floors. So we're just trying to cover those final costs and those final bills. The exhibition opens to the public this weekend. All of the works on display will be up for sale, some via silent auction. In Arrowtown, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A new study has identified the pathogen that caused 21 endangered kakapo to fall ill in 2019. Locals in Cromwell are offering a solution to central Otago's welding pine problems, which could get the chop. And Otago Polytech students launch their fashion careers with a stylish catwalk show for the big screen. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome the Associate Editor Jo Simpson. Hello Jo. Hi. What can we expect in your papers tomorrow? Um, the government's been criticised for letting Dunedin tourism training course close and mid-major staff shortages. Right. Um, the future of events at Dunedin's Forsyth Bar is looking brighter as a new flooding, flood lighting upgrade nears. Nice, see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> and Doc fears the mystery of the poached albatross eggs may never be unscrambled. Oh gosh, you're on fire tonight. <laughs> And Queenstown's bracing itself for a big weekend with a marathon. Oh, wonderful. All right, look forward to it. Thank Thanks. you, Joe. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, thundery showers stick around for a few days inland, with some rain about the coast and humid temperatures. 
Heading to the top of the South Island. Heavy rain through here tomorrow, with nor'easterlies picking up too. Temperature-wise, 20 for Nelson and Greymouth, while Christchurch is just behind with 19 degrees. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, showery with light winds here tomorrow. Uh, Ashburton and Timaru head for 20, while Awamaru's high will be 19. Heading westwards to the central lakes, thunderstorms hit tomorrow along with light winds, humid with highs of 21 in all three main spots here, Wanaka, Queenstown and Alexandra. Heading further south, easterlies and afternoon showers tomorrow, up to 20 in Valclutha and Gore, uh, 19 over in the Catlins. And down to the deep south. Well, fine tonight in Invercargill, down to 11. The next two days look sunny first up before a cloudy day with showers, possibly even thunderstorms. Numbers 21 on Friday and starting the weekend with a high of 19. And finally heading to Dunedin. Cloudy tonight and down to 13. Then cloudy and cool tomorrow with easterlies and showers from midday up to 18 degrees. Into Saturday, overcast with rain, so pack a brolly if you're heading to one of those school fairs. And the high will be 16 degrees. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.